Secrets. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to practice Chopin's Etude Opus 25, number 11, sometimes also known as Winter Wind. The right hand has a combination of two things. He has the A minor scale, but also he has the chromatic scale. So the first thing that you should understand about the piece is that it combines both. Why do I say that? Because the top notes are going to do this. Etc. All the way down. But also you have an A minor chord outline within it. So when you add the left hand notes you have this. So when you do this. You can see the A minor. have a minor here so below underneath is doing all of this a minor most of the time and on top of that you have this so if you combine the two you get after that it's, it's gonna change a little bit but still the same procedure now let me explain how do we solve that sequence? And this applies for the whole attitude. So it's these two things that you have to be aware when you practice. First is the rotation. So we have to rotate from one key to another. The whole entire attitude. So we'll do this. Rotation, each note. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left right, left, right, all the time. That's the first thing you should be aware of. So once you play faster, the rotation becomes smaller. That's the very important thing. Some people get tense because they do not rotate. So we have to go like this. So I could say the attitude is attitude on rotation, which is this movement which is the fastest movement we have and that's why this piece it can be played at very fast speed. The other thing is in order for that rotation to be even distributed you have to have a very, uh, thorough knowledge of the pivots. The pivots of the hands of the second, the third and the fourth finger. This is what keeps the hand stable and we did something similar with the Opus 25 number 12 where we talk about pivots a little bit. So this part of the hand has to be very firm. So each time you play F, C, E, A, this is where you have to center. So that has to be very strong there. If you have any weakness, you might miss the other note. So see, that's, those are the two notes for this passage. The next one, those two notes also, second and third finger add the pivots there. So we have there, pivots, Pivots here also. Then here, we don't have to do anything. Here, pivots again. Pivots. So, firm hand here. So, you can see them that it helps the hand rotate more easily. So, second, third, and fourth finger. So, what you could do when you look at this piece is look at uh, where uh, those fingers play and really like circle them and say they have to be firm for to in order to play the other ones the other notes very evenly so the trick is to try to stay very firm within those notes articulate and also keep in mind their rotation because that helps you be very flexible and avoiding tension so you could go all the way down and I'm gonna play it just so you can see it, 
how I rotate all the way through. See? Left, right, left, right. Whole time. Keeping the third, the second, and the fourth finger very firm. Now here, this is a change of sequence, but still the rotation is the same. Rotate, rotate. So all of that is the same rotation. Left, right, the whole time. Okay, I hope this is clear to you. Think on the chord A minor and the chromatic scale. The melody it was given on the introductory part, which we have this. Now, if we put that within the chord, we have this. So they have the first chord here, going to F major, and it comes from the same scale, F major, the sixth chord, one, two, three, four, five, six. So he does an inversion there, and play this, so. Then he goes to the bass, A again, A minor. And notice that he gets rid of the C, just because if not, it will be uh, diffused here. So he gets rid of C. And one of the things for the melody is that we should bring the top note, the thumb. So, whatever fingers you do, try to bring that melody together with a quarter. You could decrease the value or increase. Same thing here. So for that, uh, that will be it. To be aware of the two difficulties, having a firm hand, the second, the third, and the fourth finger, and also rotating them. The other thing is you could take the right hand by itself and practice in many different ways. You could practice the top note loud. Also the one below, so we could practice emphasizing the inside. Throughout the entire passage, up and down. And we could practice every four beats. One. And then the way it was written, every six. To get more precise with the right hand, we could do rhythms every other note. So we could do. So each note, slow, fast. But every time you do this, be aware of the rotation going towards E like this going towards the right hand each time, but also having a firm pivot inside. And then it repeats there. Also you could do towards the inside. And you could do every three. Or every six. And then you think you could take them as long as you want to on the slow notes. There is another passage which he changes and he applies the same rotation. So let's say after when we get to here. So in this passage what we have is arpeggios but with the same rotation as the beginning when we did the chromatic scale. So here we have E to B rotating. Rotating each time, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left.
So we have the same rotation for the whole pass, the whole four measures, and you have to think, you play this one and then you go this way, to the left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. At the same time that you do rotate, you also keep in mind the center fingers, the pivot, to be very firm. So those two are the pivots. Then we rotate. There you have the pivots again. Pivot. So that allows you to play it very quickly and fast. That is the trick. And also practice with rhythm. But it is important that you do the right movement at the same time and keep those uh, fingers inside very firm, the second, the third and the fourth. So for the most part, what I like to do here is bring out the E and the D. So I concentrate on those, so I say E, D, E, D. Same here, D and C. Same now. E, D, E. Now A, G, A, G, A, G, G, F, G, F, G sharp, F, and. So that way you have this. Now A, G. Synthesize better the etude. You still have a G sharp here, it comes on this scale. And we have a melody. That's the melody. Then combine, so we have an just loud. Important that you bring this up. This is E major now. So notice here. So we have E major. So you might be thinking, why E major? One, two, three, four, five. E major also is contained on the A minor scale. Also, if you know uh, E major, you know the B. B is part of it. So when you do this, to B major, B7. And then back. helpful and if you enjoy it subscribe thank you very much